Welcome! It's a bonus episode, and today it's going to be on this Kobe tape recorder that I reviewed quite a while ago now. And let's just say I know a lot more about tape recorders than I did at the time, so I just have a few things to correct my previous self on. Alright, so when I did my review on this Kobe tape recorder, uh, I... Well, let's just say I'm a lot more knowledgeable on these things now. And so there's a lot of stuff that I either got wrong or that I didn't know what it was for or that I now know what it's for. Um, I just, I know a lot more about these things now. They're pretty much just thanks to certain YouTubers like VWest Life, Techmoan, Technology Connections, or several others as well. And thanks to those channels, which I would watch a lot of videos on, I now know quite a bit about these. So... Uh, let's get into the things that I need to update you on. The first thing I want to bring up is the record bat indicator. Many portable tape recorders use the same light for recording level as the battery. If the battery gets low enough, this will light up. It would have been better if they put a slash or a line or something to separate the features. About the REM jack. Yes, it is for a remote, no, it doesn't come with one. That's not how it works. Some dynamic microphones would come with this funky plug with a remote start-stop. Those plugs fit into the mic and rem jacks at the same time. You can start recording and have the remote microphone switched off. As soon as you switch it on, it powers up the tape recorder and begins recording. I also totally forgot to demonstrate the full auto stop. I'll do that here in a bit. Basically, the device plays the tape in one direction and auto-stops. It is not an auto-reverse deck where the playhead flips around and plays the other side of the tape in the other direction. Alright, well I'm going to demonstrate the auto-stop firstly. So if there's no tape in there and you push rewind, you can see how the button pops up. If you push play, there's no tape in there but it still spins the spindle. You can probably most certainly hear the motor running. Yes, it's really that loud. Um, v West Life did a video on how to lubricate cassette motors if they're loud like this. Well, anyways, once it gets to the end of the tape, if you put your finger on the spindle to stop it, watch the play button. It took a second, but yeah, you saw the play button flip up. Uh, you probably didn't because the video light for my camcorder died unexpectedly. Um, also, same thing with fast forward. It's fast forwarding. If I put my finger on the spindle in here and stop it from moving, you see the thing pop up there like that. So that's the auto stop, full auto stop in action. And uh, yeah, now I want to show you something I recorded. This is the same tape that I recorded on for my other one. It's just a normal type one tape, 60 minute cassette, 30 minutes per side. Um, now, and well, here's the explanation that I recorded. All right, I am going to record some audio from YouTube, from the YouTube audio library, um, from some popular YouTube tech channels that, um, you know, I watch a lot of these YouTube tech channels, and I'm going to be showing you a few songs that should sound familiar for those. We're going to be doing the outro from Techmoan, the outro from Technology Connections, and the intro to the 8-Bit Guy, which is not part of the YouTube Music Library. Um, I'm just going to be recording it from my iPad to the recorder using the auxiliary cable and the microphone input jack. Uh, let's hope this works.
So what you were hearing there was the audio from my speaker to the camera. So it's very hard to understand what I'm saying. I have recorded my voice on video for long enough for me to get used to the sound of my voice and for me to be able to talk into a microphone or something and I know how to talk to make it understand me well. But even so, it's still hard to understand me on here what I was saying. And the music, did you notice the auto level happening? You notice how it was gaining like that? Um, yeah, it has an auto gain control and it doesn't work that well. And on the 8-bit guy's intro, from Anders Anger, Anders Anger Jensen. Uh, it's not really that bass heavy, but it was really starting to suck out the sound just from the drums. So the auto gain control is not very good on this thing. But I decided to go to my local antique shop and for the first time in my whole life, I bought four cassette tapes. Bought some, and they're all classic rock. Dire Straits. Uh, the Eagles, Elton John, and the Monkees. This is the oldest tape here, 1972. The rest of these are from the mid-80s. Now, I'm going to just play you a single bit of these to show you something. Um, let's start with Dire Straits. I'm going to play side one. This is the song that, this is the album that has their probably their three biggest hits. It's at the very, very beginning of the tape, so I'll fast forward it a little bit. Um... It plays tapes a lot better than it records onto them. Pre-recorded tapes... Pre-recorded tapes actually sound pretty good on this thing. Um, it's just the recording part that's horrendous. Now, I'm not sure if you can tell there, but the song is definitely playing too low-pitched. I'm going to show you only a few seconds because of YouTube's broken copyright system. Um, So, yeah, you can clearly, hopefully, tell that that's too low quality, or too low pitch, but it's not actually that low quality. I'm just going to rewind it back to the beginning. I guess I'll show you the auto stop in action again. I'll grab my um, Eagles cassette. I'm just going to play a little bit of this. Um, now, there's a song on side two that I basically grew up listening to um, called The Long Run. And when I was learning to play piano which I am not a very good piano player. I'm pretty much just no chords and a little thing here or there. But anyway, um, I, can, I can tell chords by ear. So I know what the C chord sounds like. And the long run is on the C chord. But on this tape recorder, on more than one occasion, it's so low it's actually playing on the B chord. Um, I'm going to rewind to that song, and we're going to see if it's doing that again. I'll just rewind to the beginning of the song. This takes a really long time to rewind. I'll probably end up cutting most of this part out. Um, also, yeah, these were, I still have the sticker on them. These were 95 cents at the antique shop, but the ones with album artwork were more expensive. The Monkees one was $5.95. Now, that's another thing I'll give this tape recorder credit for. It rewinds fast. Well, of course, I'm no expert on how fast they normally rewind, but this one does a really quick, it's a quick rewind. Let's go. Alright, you might want to use that little part of that in that video because you know what just happened there? Do you hear how it like tried to cut out the treble? I don't know if it has some automatic noise reduction thing, but I've heard it do that before. Where it'll just be playing and then all of a sudden most of the treble goes away. And it just sounds really weird and kind of muffled. Again, I don't know if it has some sort of auto noise reduction, but if it has it, it does not work very well. Let's rewind a little further. Okay, so while this other song fades out, New Kid in Town, this should be on the C chord. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. It has... Yeah. Yet. So it's, yeah, it, it is kind of a little bit flatter, a little bit of a lower note than normal, but it's still on the C chord. Yeah. 
but it's definitely lower pitch than than normal. Um, very strange because we have another tape recorder, or well, not a tape recorder, but we have another. Um, well, I should have just paused it, but we have another machine that can do CDs, records, and all that, but it has a tape player on the side. It's one of those really low quality record players. Um, with, that's kind of those all-in-one, but it has a tape player on the side. And guess what? It does the opposite. It plays this on C sharp. It's it's an entire, it's, it's up. It's, it plays it too fast. So I'm not really sure what the deal is here, but it has very strong speed fluctuations. And unfortunately, I can't show those to you here on YouTube because uh, copyright is a thing. And also, you cannot record onto these tapes. The copy protection thing works. Um, but, yeah, just too bad that it doesn't really play at a consistent speed. Uh, I can't really show that to you because, again, I've actually, and my ears are not super audiophile-y. Um, but, and so I'm not normally able to hear wow and flutter unless it's playing a long stringed note and it's obvious. But on this tape recorder, and this tape recorder alone, and only this, I have noticed the wow before. Speed fluctuations up and down, very slow. Even slower than that, actually. It'll go up, then it'll go down, and then it'll go up again, and then down. It's very, it's a very slow fluctuation. Now, it could be a couple of things, because I am not plugged into the, just directly plugged into the wall because this cable's so short. I am actually plugged into a power strip, and that power strip is old and the ground prong is broken off of it and it's just a very kind of unstable power strip so I don't know if that is affecting the performance of this but even so when I plug it into the wall I can still hear the speed fluctuations um, so yeah that's just my take on it and that's um, that's how I have looked at it here I think that about concludes our in-depth look at Oh, I'm actually going to fast forward this to the very end. But I believe that concludes our um, in-depth look at this tape player. It plays a heck of a lot better than it records, and it still doesn't have a very good built-in speaker, um, but at least it's something. And you could plug in separate speakers if you wanted to. Um, I just, I wish it recorded better, because, I mean, this is the first tape recorder I've ever had that records and does all this. That really don't sound too healthy, does it? Um, also, isn't that interesting? Blue leader tape at the end. Um, now, yeah, I just... I put that in upside down. I, why do I always do that? Um, yeah, I just wish it worked a little better. It plays fine. It plays slow, but... Eh, a little kind of slow. Um, but the recording... Oh, man, the recording. It's really bad. Well, if I remember, I will post a link or a card up here to V West Life's video that he did on almost this exact tape recorder, but it was a different company and it was bright blue in color. And yeah, he goes over a lot more information than I do. He is a lot more knowledgeable than I am on this kind of stuff. And so if you'd like to watch his video, then the card probably already appeared up there. If you missed it or if you want to watch it, whenever, then you can tap or click the screen, hit the I button, and you can see the videos that are in there. But anyway, yeah, if you want to know a little bit more about, you know, like Wow and Flutter, or more demonstrations of how it sounds, and by the way, mine has a much worse microphone than that blue one he reviewed, um, but as far as features go, it's exactly the same. Um, other than, yeah, mine does not have soft eject. That is a very rough eject. Um, whereas the one he reviewed did have soft eject. I'm not going to spoil everything, though. If you want to watch that, then he's got a video for you there. Now, keeping all the stuff that I said about this in mind, about stuff that I do know now that I didn't know before, uh, well, you may have never seen my original video that I made for the tape recorder. So if you'd like to see the original review I made of it before I was as knowledgeable as I am now on these things, well, there you go. There's a card up there. If your device doesn't support cards, I do use, I will put every link that I'm talking about into the description as well, so you can go check those out. With that being said, I don't think there's a ton else for me to talk about for this thing. So, yeah, I think that's going to be it for this video, and I will see you next week.